Hey guys, Mark here, and today we're going to be talking about how difficult it is to run games in 4K and if it's even worth doing. Let's jump in. <music> 4K gaming has been around for quite some time now, but for the most part it's been out of reach for people like you and me. With 4K monitors costing in the thousands and most consumer-grade graphics cards being too weak to handle AAA titles in 4K, it was difficult, to say the least. However, in the past few years, the power of graphics cards have come a long way, and the cost of 4K monitors have actually gone down significantly, to the point where you can get one for less than $400. So in 2018, is it worth it to get into 4K gaming? In some ways, yes. Others, no. Let's go a little deeper. My graphics card of choice is the NVIDIA GTX 1080. I have the reference version, so it's not the best 1080 on the market, but it's a 1080 nonetheless. I also have an i7-8700, 24GB of DDR4 RAM, and a couple of fast SSDs in my system, so it's definitely no slouch. All in all, it probably cost me around $1,700 US dollars with taxes and shipping. And here's the thing, even for me, 4K is still an absolute beast to conquer. To illustrate, let's look at The Witcher 3 first. At 4K and all of the settings at maximum except for anti-aliasing, we're getting around 35 to 40 FPS on average. Definitely playable, but we're not hitting that target of 60 frames per second. Personally, I don't like playing at anything less than 60, so I'll have to turn down some settings in the game if I want to play at 4K. Still though, it's hard to deny how beautiful The Witcher looks in 4K. The textures are shockingly sharp, and the detail on some models is amazing. Also, though it might look smooth, the actual gameplay footage is a little choppy at 35 to 40 FPS. Shadowplay is just smoothing out the recorded footage for your viewing pleasure. Now let's try something like Rust. In 4K, Rust is actually very demanding. There were times where it actually dropped below 30 FPS, but the mildly overclocked GTX 1080 could output a fairly stable 35 FPS most of the time. Again, you'd need to drop some settings if you wanted to play at 4K 60 FPS. For this one, I actually prefer playing at 1080p with max settings as it provides the most stable experience. Project Cars 2 is a beautiful game, but it's also very taxing on the GPU. Not quite as much as Rust, though. On average, the 1080 was pulling about 45 frames per second. Again, all these frame rates are fairly playable, but to get the optimal experience, you're going to want to drop things like shadow and reflection quality, and maybe even some texture quality to hit 60 frames. On the plus side, there's something that 4K is absolutely excellent for. Reviving old games. Playing older games that look a little on the dated side in 4K will completely change the look of them. Dead Space, a game that was released over 10 years ago, looks brilliant in 4K. And it's not that hard to run either, because I was getting a solid 60 FPS the whole time. Finally, let's finish off with something easier to run like Fortnite. Here I was able to get a solid 60 frames with no anti-aliasing. That's no surprise though, as Fortnite is a very well optimized game that really isn't all that difficult to run with any modern GPU. You might have noticed that these games are running at a maximum frame rate of 60 FPS. Some people consider that buttery smooth, while others that are accustomed to 144Hz monitors think it's kinda choppy. Unfortunately, almost every 4K monitor available on the market today runs at a maximum of 60 Hz, meaning the frame rates are locked to a maximum of 60 frames per second. Asus just released a 27-inch 144Hz 4K monitor with G-Sync built in, but it's going to cost over US$2,000. And good luck hitting those high frame rates anyway, at least with current GPU technology. As a side note, you're going to want to buy a monitor that's at least 27 inches large. There are a few 24 and 25 inch monitors on the market, but at that size, the 4K will make less of a visual impact and you'll run into scaling issues all over the place in regular day-to-day -day use. Even 27 inches is a little on the small side, so go as big as you can within reason. And that brings us to the final conclusion. Is 4K actually worth getting into? If you don't already have a powerful system that's capable of doing 4K, I can honestly say it's probably not worth it for you. If you do though, and all you need is the monitor, Go for it. The visual difference between 1080p and 4K is mind-blowing. There's less of a difference between 1440p and 4K, obviously, but it's still very noticeable. Colors pop and sharpness is at an all-time high. You most likely won't be able to play above 60 frames per second, but if that doesn't bother you, it's a very beautiful experience. If you like this video, please give me a like and subscribe to support my channel. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.